I am confused, folks. This kind of reminds me of Easy Cheese. Do we need it? Do we just not know that we need it? Is it necessary? All right, so today we are trying out a product that I am so confused by, intrigued by, don't know what the heck to expect by. So today is Foundation Friday. I usually post a foundation video every single Friday on my channel, but last week's video and this week's video are clearly not foundation. I'm pre-filming for 15 days of foundation right now, so every single day. I've been filming foundation videos. When you guys are seeing this, the announcement video won't be up yet, but it is coming very soon. But what we're gonna be trying out today is a concealer. Not just any concealer. This is the new Pure Shake and Bake Powder to Cream under eye concealer. Let that sink in for a minute. Powder to cream. When I first saw this on Twitter, I think I literally read that about 10 times. Powder to cream. I'm very confused. Typically, I would think that you would want a concealer to be the opposite, go from cream to powder so you don't have to set it. I don't know why I would want a concealer to go from powder to cream, but we're gonna try it out. They actually they actually sent this with uh, my face on a cookie. Probably one of the more creative packages I've received. I'm not sure if I can eat my own face, but very cool idea. I would love some foundation down the neck though. I've made that joke on three different social media platforms now. So looking on the Pure Cosmetics, this only comes in three shades, light, medium, and dark. I'm assuming that if this product goes over well, they would hopefully be expanding the shade range, but who knows? I have no idea if the shade light is gonna be light enough for me, but we will see. Obviously, three shades in a concealer is pretty crappy. So this retails for $26 and you get 0.17 ounces of product. So I did a little comparing here. Tarte Shape Tape, we know, comes with a shit ton of product. Tarte Shape Tape retails for $27 and you get 0.33 ounces of product. So for a dollar, you get quite a bit more. Comparing it to the Urban Decay Naked Skin, and these are obviously liquid concealers, so just keep that in mind. This is like ounces versus fluid ounces. Urban Decay Naked Skin retails for 29 bucks and you get 0.16 fluid ounces of product. So it's actually pretty expensive, very expensive. So let's take this out of the packaging. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to get a little mini sponge in here. Oh, yep. Here's a little mini sponge that it comes with to apply. Oh, this looks hella dark for my skin tone. Let's just quickly read what this thing is supposed to do and then I'm gonna put this on my face. So it says, conceal and set in one step. It's miraculous concealer melts into the skin to mask imperfections without the hassle of setting, waiting, and baking with additional powder. Translucent powder is built into the innovative formula so the look of dark circles and blemishes fade away. The result is a smooth and creaseless finish that lasts for hours and won't settle into fine lines. It's cruelty free as usual with Pure and there's no animal byproducts. So all it says for application is that we're supposed to dab a small amount over blemishes and under eyes using the mini blending sponge. So here's the situation with today. I've been filming foundation videos every single day. I leave on a plane in a few hours, so I'm not gonna be able to do a wear test with this one, but I have a feeling that might work out in my favor because this looks too dark. But what I am gonna do to test this is I'm gonna do half my face with foundation, how I would normally put on concealer under my eyes. I'm gonna do a liquid foundation on half my face, test out the concealer under my eyes, and then on this half of my face, I'm gonna test it how I would wear it on more of a natural makeup day. So I'm gonna try and use it to conceal some of my scarring and also under my eyes without liquid foundation on underneath. So the packaging, you have this twist top and then you actually get a little kind of spout, which is nice. I'm glad it's not just totally open like a translucent powder kind of packaging. It's not a glass bottle, it just feels like hard plastic. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in, get real up close, and we're gonna apply this thing. If you're excited for this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, you can join the Bayrito family and subscribe. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Here we go. I feel like these baby hairs just like popped up overnight. Stay in your place, bro. All right, should I put on half my foundation first? No, let's just do the concealer first on this side. I'm gonna try it with this little sponge that they give. It has some interesting angles going on. They didn't say to dampen the sponge or anything and it does feel a bit harder. So I have a feeling you're just kind of supposed to spread it with this. So I'm gonna try it with this sponge since that's how they recommend to apply it. And then I'll also probably try it with my finger or another brush. Flavored coffee always sounds like a good idea. I don't know how I feel about it when I'm drinking it. So I guess we're just gonna do a little, probably should get in frame. Okay, if I can manage to stay in focus and have this not fall on my mic, this is gonna be a win. Tap a little bit out on here. No idea how much you're supposed to use. I have about that amount on there right now. I don't know how this isn't gonna fall off when I go to turn it. I feel like the sponge just ate the majority of that. Whoa, it does feel kind of like, it doesn't feel like a liquid. It feels a tiny bit tacky, but not like a liquid that needs to be set. What the heck? 
it definitely brightened with that amount, but I wouldn't even say I got light coverage. I mean, it basically just like canceled out the redness on my face, I would say. Off the bat, don't like the sponge to apply it. I'm gonna put some on my usual concealer brush and try it that way. I'm just gonna shake some out on here. Let's try this again. You kind of have to like stick it down first so it doesn't go flying off. Okay, it's kind of like sticking. I don't know what the heck this feels like. Doesn't feel like a liquid. It almost feels like when you go to blend out powder on top of a like really sticky base. I think because my face is so red, it's looking like it's light enough. But if you look at my neck, it basically matches my neck. So I'm curious to see how this looks with foundation because typically with under eye concealer, I like my concealer about a shade lighter than my foundation. So for light makeup kind of days with no foundation, I feel like the shade could probably work. It's interesting. It doesn't look bad under there. I do have a few lines under here, which I've never found a concealer that doesn't eventually settle in them, so it's just kind of which one doesn't make it look dry and crusty and emphasize the lines. So it is settling in there, but I wouldn't say it looks bad, and it doesn't look worse than any kind of other concealer I put on as far as settling. The coverage is very light. You can see still everything coming through. You can see darkness coming through right here. You can see my freckles right here. I'm gonna first kind of conceal some of my scarring and things that I wanna conceal with this, and then maybe try and build this up just out of curiosity to see if I can get more coverage. I feel like you would go through this hella fast. Let's just start down here with some of my scarring. Okay, I don't love how that's sitting on my skin. It's kind of clinging down here. I don't have any major dry patches right now. I am on Accutane for those of you who are new here, but my skin has just been more normal to dry lately. This is where I have a big scarring spot, so let's see if it covers it up. Definitely very light coverage. I wanna see how it looks around my nose area. You can see my pores are pretty large right there. Looks okay around the nose area. It doesn't seem to be emphasizing my pores a whole lot. They still look the same to me. I have a lot of scarring and stuff down here, so let's try it down my neck. Yeah, I'm using a crap ton of this. I'm gonna try a different sponge down here. This is a mini Eco Tools, Eco Tools sponge. Okay, so that virtually covered nada. It's kind of just toning down the problem areas. I definitely do not agree with the claim that it covers blemishes, but as you can see, it definitely toned down my redness this side compared to the no concealer side. I probably wouldn't use this again on the rest of my face, but underneath my eyes for just a really, really subtle, natural kind of brightening effect, it looks pretty good. It's not clinging anywhere underneath my eyes. Again, this is sheer, so it's not gonna give you any kind of coverage under there. I wanna build it up right there to see if I can cover it a little bit more. At this point though, I feel like I'm probably using like $5 worth of concealer just on this half of my face. I see actually a little bit of like distinction between where it's stopped and then my face. So I'm just gonna try and blend those edges. It doesn't look necessarily bad layered. I just didn't really get a whole lot more coverage. I'm just confused. I just don't know when I would reach for this over a liquid concealer. So let's try it over foundation on this side. So I'm gonna try it with the CYO Long Lasting Life Proof Foundation because this is one of my current favorite foundations foundations. That was hard to come out. I have a bunch of videos using this. This foundation is six or seven bucks from Walgreens. I haven't seen it in store, but you can get it online and it is friggin' beautiful. Covers, sits on the skin beautifully, smooths everything out, doesn't emphasize dryness or anything. So many of you guys have messaged me saying you tried this and you love this foundation. I feel like this is one of the most underrated products out there right now. I'm just kind of blending it across the nose so it doesn't look super funky. I do still bring my foundation underneath and over my eyelids. I don't notice a huge difference when I don't pull it all the way underneath my eyes, so I just do it. CYO, life proof, thank you for existing. Really curious how the shade is gonna look on top of this already. This is looking darker than this half of my face. So here we go, round two. I'm gonna do the brush because I definitely prefer the brush over the sponge. Maybe I should try my finger. I don't know how a finger is gonna blend out powder. Ooh, that does not look good. I'm all zoomed in. I feel like it's not quite picking up how I'm seeing it in real life, but on top of there, it looks 
pretty crepey. I'm definitely getting more creases and lines and it pretty much took away the coverage. Like I feel like I actually got more coverage putting that foundation underneath my eyes than using this concealer. And it also definitely is darker under there than on my face. I would say it's about half a shade darker than my foundation. Not loving how it looks. I definitely prefer how it looks just on more natural look without foundation because this is just not working. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna put some on my finger now. Just kind of pat this in underneath the eyes. It looks so orange when you put it out. It feels soft and like velvety, almost like a really velvety powder. Yeah, not loving that. Oh, this eye just looks like it got like punched in the eye. All right, so this is definitely not a product that I would use on top of foundation. I think this is something where if you're curious about it and you like really, really sheer concealers and you just want something kind of more natural that's not gonna cover anything, maybe just brighten stuff or kind of even out some redness. I do like that it's not seeming to settle or crease like this side is. It just isn't doing a whole lot. And for 20, what is this, 26 bucks? Yeah, for 26 bucks, I would say maybe for $5 it would be worth to try it, but for $26 I would probably pass on this one. I will say, interesting idea. I think it's cool that they tried something new and a little bit innovative. I don't think I've ever seen a product like this come out, and I can only imagine how hard it is to come out with new product ideas at this point. Like I feel like everything's been done. So it is cool that at least this is something new. We haven't really seen this yet as far as I'm concerned. So personally, this one is a no for me. If you've tried this, let me know what you think of it. It would be cool to do a foundation like this, like a, a full coverage powdered foundation that dried to this kind of formula. Pure Cosmetics, you guys should get on that. I'm also curious how this would go mixing in with concealers, liquid concealers, almost like the Urban Decay Velvetizer. Maybe you wouldn't have to set that concealer. Maybe it would be a total disaster. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you're excited for the 15 days of foundation announcement video coming up, don't forget to give this a thumbs up. If you're new here, you can subscribe and don't forget to turn on the bell notifications. I know you guys hear that from everyone, but it's because YouTube changed their subscription feed thing. So make sure you don't have highlights selected in your feed. Check on your mobile, make sure highlights aren't selected, do it in chronological order so you actually see everyone you're subscribed to, their uploads, because right now they're just putting random videos at the top of your subscription feed. So that's fun. Yay, YouTube. I don't think I've ever wrapped up a video with half a face foundation on. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.